I'm Kelly McCormick, and this is a special mini episode of the Transforming Anxiety Podcast. Welcome to a brand new series called The How to Not Panic Sessions. This is episode number three. Hey there, here we are again. Folks, I know that we are in the midst of a wild moment in time. I know the coronavirus and all of the unknowns that we are collectively facing makes for a tumultuous experience. But I have to tell you, there is so much love and compassion and kindness all around us right now too. I went to Costco because I actually needed to go to Costco the other day and it was a zoo. (laughs) It was way worse than Christmas time. But you know what? Everyone was so nice. Everyone was so kind. And all of our inboxes are being bombarded with emails from companies who are informing us of their plans or their cancellations or their adjustments, how they want to keep their people safe and healthy. And some of those companies are offering things like free shipping so that we have an opportunity to patronize them without being with them, right? Or coupon codes to make things happen in a more to-go way than usual. And hey, Disney Plus gave us Frozen 2 way ahead of time. (laughs) So we got to watch that as a family last night, which was a super fun surprise. So I'm just saying, this isn't great. I get that. I feel like the kids may never go back to school. (laughs) I'm questioning even the most benign things like, is it okay that we go to the orthodontist? Can we have healthy friends over who have not been traveling? It's a deeply weird time, but it's also a beautiful time. It really is. There is so much loveliness around us. And I know I've told you this before, but we do absolutely find what we're looking for. So just be on to yourself. Check in with yourself and see, what evidence am I seeking here and now? Am I looking for chaos and bad news and stock markets crashing and upheaval everywhere? Or am I looking for something, anything else? Okay, so we've talked about thinking on purpose And how we need to take control of our thinking and be mindful of what we're thinking and what feelings we're creating for ourselves. And we talked about completing the stress response cycle and helping your body move through the three stages of that cycle so that you don't get stuck in that fight or flight stage. But you give yourself a way to move through that and into the end zone, the I'm safe relief of completing the cycle. So today, we're going to talk about the pause. This is a concept that I first heard in a really organized way in Tara Brock's book, Radical Acceptance. And I say that because it's something that I feel like I kind of knew on like an intuitive gut level, but I hadn't really heard it explained. So here's how she puts it. This is a quote from her book, radical acceptance that I'm just going to shorten a little bit here so that I can share it with you. She says, in our lives, we often find ourselves in situations we can't control, circumstances in which none of our strategies work. Helpless and distraught, we frantically try to manage what is happening. The more fear, the more frenetically our bodies and minds work. We fill our days with continual movement, mental planning and worrying, habitual talking, fixing, scratching, adjusting, phoning, snacking, discarding, buying, looking in the mirror. What would it be like if right in the midst of this busyness, we were to consciously take our hands off the controls? What if we were to intentionally stop our mental computations and are rushing around, and for a minute or two, simply pause and notice our inner experience. So this is exactly what so many of us are facing right now, a forced pause, an unexpected, 
perhaps somewhat unwanted, pause. So you may be home from work. The kids may be home from school. Soccer, libraries, after school fundraisers, golf, parties, events, get togethers, it's all being canceled. As a society, we're taking a collective breath. Many of us, honestly, for the first time ever, we're looking around going, huh, now what? So I know this pause comes with challenges. I know there's childcare and appointments and errands to figure out. I know that events that people are really excited about are being postponed or outright canceled. I know there are big decisions people are making daily, sometimes hourly, about what's in the best interest for everybody. I know there are huge disappointments and inconveniences. I get it. Me too. Here too. We're all experiencing a range of change and upset at the moment. And it is important to honor that to allow the disappointment and frustration and upset. We need to acknowledge all of that. My kids are bummed out. No soccer, no libraries, no arcade parties, no movies over spring break. There's a lot that we've all been excited about that just is not going to happen right now. And also, at the same time, we have this moment, this pause together. We have this time that we literally never get. We have this opportunity to connect that we almost never are offered because life is so busy and so frantic all the time. We have a real chance here if we acknowledge the pause. So (laughs) I admit that yesterday I lost my head a little bit because I could see that my kids and my husband, let's be honest, we're all looking for looking at this um, forthcoming break as if they were going to just have this fantastic chance to conquer Zelda or play endless hours of Pokemon or whatever video games they're up to. But once I got over the initial flash of frustration and I was able to show up for a real conversation with my family, I asked them, guys, what do you want to do here? What do you always want to do that we don't have time for? that we can't get to, that you've wondered about or been curious about. And of course, they sat there for a minute. They're like, more video games. (laughs) I was like, yeah, let's dig deeper, right? Like, really sink in. Give yourself a moment. And then my older son, he's 10, he said he wanted to reread some of his favorite books. He said he's always excited about new books and reading the next thing. But now that he thought of it, there were books that he really enjoyed that were just sitting on his shelf that he wanted to revisit. And I thought, yes, like that is the pause, right? It's not, can we buy more books? Although, of course, we will, I'm sure. But it was all, it was this pause, this reflection. I also thought to myself, this kid is totally my son, (laughs) right? So then my younger son, he surprised us all. He said, He wanted to learn to play the piano. You guys, my heart just about burst at that. We have a piano in our living room and he's asked about taking lessons on and off. But dude, when are we going to take lessons? And we have to fit that in. And it just, he's never really pushed it for us to take it seriously enough, I guess. I haven't taken the time. I haven't taken the pause, right? So I got on Amazon. I ordered up some beginner books, some beginner piano books, And my son and I are going to do daily piano lessons together for who knows how long. I played the piano for years, and so I'm totally equipped to teach him the basics. And he may come out of this isolation playing Beethoven. (laughs) Who knows, right? But here's my point. I know we're all bummed about something. We're all inconvenienced in some way. Yes. And it's important. It's really important to allow ourselves to feel bummed and to feel inconvenienced. It's okay. It's appropriate, in fact. It makes perfect sense. But you know what? We humans are complicated, sophisticated beings. And we all come standard with the most amazing tool on the planet, which is a brain. And it turns out that we can feel bummed and excited to reread our favorite books. We can be disappointed and 
totally energized about learning to play the piano. We can feel inconvenienced and feel completely productive about finally cleaning out the bedroom closets. We can feel both. It's and both, right? This pause is probably a once in a lifetime experience. It's the most unexpected and wild chance we've got to, as Tara Brock said, notice our inner experience, to create an inner experience, to drop in and experience something other than simply rushing through another weekday. This is a moment the world hasn't seen since like 1918 and the Spanish flu. And things have gotten a hell of a lot more complicated and busy and frantic since then. But we've also gotten smarter and more sophisticated and have far more medical and technological advances available to us. So I don't want to give you Pollyanna platitudes about getting through this moment in time, right? This is hard, no doubt. But it can be hard and we can honor the pause. We can be disappointed and fearful and bummed out and we can be willing and excited to take full advantage of everything this moment this pause is offering us sound good all right i love you guys i'm thinking of you all all the time i really am and i will see you again tomorrow for another short mini episode in this series the how to not panic sessions So don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm loving hearing from you guys. See, we're connecting in ways we never would have connected. Um, You can find me on Instagram. I'm at McCormick, or you can find me through my website, which is www.kellyhanlonmccormick.com. I am here for you. I've got you. We're going to do this together. We can do hard things, and we can do hard things together. All right, my friends? Okay. See you tomorrow, and until then, take care. Thank you for listening to this mini episode of the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Kelly McCormick. If you enjoy the work we're doing here and want to get even more out of this, I invite you to check out the Fierce Calm Project. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all of this work apply it to your life and create real lasting transformation. Find out more and get enrolled by going to www.kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash fierce calm project. We would love to have you join us. Music for the podcast is by Jesse Blake. The song is ritual and you can find out more about him at www.jesseblakemusic.com.